All right, good afternoon everyone from Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you for joining us today, along with Boston University's online professional fundraising program director, John Shafrith, as we cover the program details, course topics, and what our students can expect when enrolled in this dynamic certificate program. My name is Sarah, and I will be moderating and helping to facilitate today's session alongside John and our enrollment advisor, Carrie. We will hold a live Q&A session at the close of the webinar, so please ask your questions in the questions box located on the right side of your screen. We will also be sending a link to the recorded version of this webinar for your future reference, so keep a lookout in your inbox for that. Here's our agenda for today. Um, the topics we'll be uh, going over. So first we'll cover the professional fundraising program as an overview. Next we'll dive into the curriculum and instructors. Third, we'll cover the registration process. And then finally, we'll wrap up with our live questions and answer session. All right, I would now like to introduce John Shafrith, the program director of our professional fundraising program. John has been lead instructor at BU since 2011 and completed the program himself in 2007. John is currently a senior development officer at Harvard Business School and is a regular speaker and volunteer at the annual case conferences that are held. John is an expert in alumni engagement, annual funds and volunteer management, as well as major gifts. So John's involvement with fundraising in the community makes him an accomplished leader for this program. And John, I'd like to now turn the dialogue over to you. Thank you, Sarah, for that kind introduction. Uh, very much appreciated. And thank you everyone for joining either today live or as you're listening to this later on. Um, it's truly inspiring to have your interest in this field. Um, in my 13 years in the industry, uh, I've really begun to understand and be committed to the fact that those who continue to learn continue to be successful. And so whatever your path is that brought you here, I think that is wonderful. I also wanted to say that I'm incredibly inspired by uh, those who are interested in getting into the philanthropic field. It is philanthropy that drives many organizations in the nonprofit area that are tackling significant uh, challenges in our society and bringing that philanthropy to those organizations uh, is an important role and one that uh, you should all be proud of your interest in. So briefly to on a high level to talk about the program. Uh, we are here at Boston University uh, and offered this is a principles program around uh, fundraising. So it's a best practice oriented 12 week program. Each week we'll go through what it looks like um, has an individual uh, topic that you'll be led through both course content uh, that really focuses on the principles and best practice, um, as well as uh, live webinar sessions that will take the, uh, the learnings a step further and allow you to participate and engage as you're able more deeply with the uh, instructors. And then we will uh, develop your skills through both thought-provoking reflection um, and individual assignments each week. Um, and the individual assignments have a particular focus on practical learning. So you will leave this 12 week course with a portfolio of work um, and skills that you've developed. Um, as mentioned, we there are um, instructors that will take you through each week. Uh, we'll talk perspectives from small and large shops. Uh, this does award CFRE credit for education points and for many leads to a certificate in professional fundraising. Next slide. So who's the target audience for this course? There's sort of four broad buckets um, that we see come and thrive, um, although that's not to say that there couldn't be others who, are, who have reason to take the course. Um, the first is the career changers, those seeking to go from uh, one field into the fundraising field. This provides a broad-based understanding of the work that's in fundraising, the opportunities that you might be able to uh, find jobs in, as well as develop the language and skills to be able to talk effectively, and most importantly, determine ways that your current skills are transferable into this industry. The second group, um, and these are in no particular order, uh, around professional fundraisers seeking advancement. So, there, as you're growing in an organization, 
oftentimes additional knowledge and exposure to other parts of the fundraising uh, spectrum uh, can be helpful. We get tend to be sort of narrowly focused as we start and not necessarily having the time within our organization to lift our heads up and connect the dots around the bigger picture. This course can be great for that. Uh, alternatively, for those who are leading organizations, uh, you may have come up a specific track and realize that as you are having more and more responsibility and additional direct reports, you might need to uh, a primer on what some of those groups are that are now reporting to you. Again, this uh, course allows you to go week by week through the different uh, functions in the development field uh, and do a deep dive into best practice. And finally, and this has been a growing uh, group in this course, um, our volunteers and board members. Many organizations, the lifeblood of their uh, existence is around volunteers, and particularly for small organizations that don't have the capacity to have full-time staff where we see board members and volunteers take this course to build their knowledge and allow them to effectively uh, work on sort of the fundraising part of their organization. Um, and just briefly to touch that, you know, those are sort of four different areas. Within each of those, uh, we have both domestic students and international students. We have urban students and rural students. So it's really a uh, a full mixture of experiences that um, join this course. Next slide, please. Building on that a little bit, um, as you think about the types of jobs that this course could be helpful um, in uh, preparing you for, you can see listed here, um, it's a spectrum of organizations. We talk, the instructors have experience in higher ed and healthcare. Uh, many have done consulting in human services as well. And looking at the curriculum, you'll see and have exposure to a number of different um, different areas, as well as a number of different job functions. Through most of the effort, through each of the modules, you will see uh, there are specific sort of jobs you can begin to map out uh, and job functions in that or in that week. Uh, and instructors and other classmates are always helpful. Uh, in talking through or sort of helping individuals learn more. Next slide. So getting a little bit into the content, um, again, this is a principles and best practice course. Um, each one of these weeks, we'll do a deep dive and give you frameworks that you're able to then apply through your assignment. And then for many of you who are associated with a nonprofit right now, either working or volunteering, you can apply those frameworks uh, to the work that you're doing. So you'll start with um, fundraising overview. We'll sort of look at some current trends, have you think a little bit expansively about what the opportunities uh, in philanthropy are. We'll roll that into sort of a bit of uh, behind the scenes prospect research, how individuals are um, identified and then justified as prospects for an organization. This is often helpful um, in for smaller organizations where we talk about sort of free tools that you can use to help find constituents so that you can apply some of your, your newly found uh, fundraising knowledge to. Then sort of building from there, we'll go and begin more on the front line. We'll talk about annual giving, how you set up an annual giving program, how you inspire larger gifts within an annual giving program, and the different tools uh, that have been used over time um, and those that are being uh, leveraged today. Following pretty easily into that, although there's um, application across the development function. We'll talk about technology enabled fundraising. Much of that has been around uh, communications, and now we're seeing that develop into um, online um, crowdfunding, uh, whether it be through Facebook or other platforms, that's become an opportunity uh, for real um, impact for your organization, and we'll go into that in another other technologies that have cropped up. This is a great area too, where you'll benefit from the class discussion where you'll have uh, peers who will have experience with lots of different uh, tools and they'll be sharing that and you'll be going into deeper conversation around that. Uh, next slide. Following that, we'll go back to the front line around major gifts. We'll talk about the process of developing an individual major gift strategy uh, how you go from having identified the prospect 
to making and closing the ask. Uh, the assignment there will actually put together a plan for how you can do that with, uh, with your prospects. Then we'll go into plan giving an area that uh, tends to um, be a bit of, uh, can, can be a bit scary because there's lots of sort of technical language that comes with that. Uh, but our instructor in that uh, module breaks it down into um, really easy and accessible uh, language that will allow you to have a sense of how to leverage um, plan giving both at small organizations and larger shops. Um, it is applicable everywhere, uh, even if your resources are limited. Following that, we'll go from sort of the individual to the foundation and corporations. We'll talk and learn about how to approach foundations, uh, writing a letter of propose for a proposal, um, identifying how you would uh, differentiate individual giving strategies versus a foundation versus a corporation. The approach is actually uh, quite different with those three, and um, you'll sort of go deeper into that. In the next module, as a way to summarize uh, much of what you've been learning so far, we'll talk about capital campaigns, a structure um, well known in the philanthropy world to increase uh, fundraising over a given set of time based on specific objectives that your organization has. Uh, anyone who touches a nonprofit, you may have a sense that there's always a capital campaign going on, but this is actually a specific structure um, used periodically by organizations and we'll sort of go deep into how, why that's set up, how it's done, um, and how it can be most effective. Next slide. Then we'll turn, and this is uh, often a very interesting module for those trying to get into the industry. Uh, there's a whole host of job functions that support frontline fundraising work uh, that are incredibly important. Um, and we'll sort of go through what those are, how they contribute to the um, organization, the sort of place um, that they have, and the importance that they are. So that's often a place that is eye-opening to someone who does not have as deep of a knowledge or isn't currently working in the uh, industry. As mentioned, volunteers are incredibly important to organizations. We'll talk about how to, how to best uh, use volunteer leadership, how to recruit, how to maximize their role for the uh, organization, um, and how to manage volunteers. Uh, in the last two modules, we'll go and we'll talk about the management of the organization. Um, so understanding how to manage your development shop is uh, crucially important um, and becoming uh, more and more sophisticated. The assignment there will actually, um, for those who might be taking on this role in an organization or are new to this role, will go through the conversations and framework that you might consider in the first six months of, of that job. A lot of the questions you would want to ask to learn what your organization is doing. It's also a great area where we talk about the fact that some organizations management means uh, one person sort of managing themselves and they're sort of the full development function. Um, in other organizations, that might mean managing 50 people. Uh, so it takes uh, all different shapes. The principles and practices tend to uh, be similar. Uh, the amount of time um, that you're able to devote to each of, the, each of the important questions is where it tends to differ. We'll also talk some about sort of ethics and um, how uh, that plays into uh, taking gifts and uh, best practices around that. Finally, we'll, we'll sort of sum up our experience as well as look forward uh, to how individuals taking the course will use what they've learned to practically apply it to an organization they're involved with, a job they're seeking, or a job that they have. Uh, we'll spend a lot of time sort of trying to codify what you've learned and really make it accessible for, um, for your future endeavors. Next slide. As mentioned, we have a great group of instructors. Um, this is a team talk course. You'll find that uh, each week you'll have an instructor that'll probably be that will be different week to week, um, and they all have experience that they're happy to connect and share on. So consider this part of the uh, the network you're developing by taking this course. Um, and they're open and um, pretty good access. You'll also have a team of uh, facilitators who will help you um, with your assignments 
um, and feedback and all of that as well. Now I'm going to turn it over to Carrie, who will talk more about program logistics, how you register for the program. Thank you very much, John. Hello, everyone. Uh, the one, the one, the most important thing I like all students to know about the program is it's asynchronous, meaning there's no set time of day or day of week that students are required to log on. Um, as John just mentioned, this is an instructor-led course, so you do have real people teaching the course and giving out weekly assignments. Um, the weekly time commitment in order for students to be successful is approximately seven to ten hours per week. Um, and each week the instructors will let you know exactly what you need to do and give you weekly deadlines. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Blackboard, that is the platform that we use for the course. Um, John had mentioned that we do have um, some live optional webinars for the program. And here you can see that over the course um, of 12 weeks, we do offer quite a few uh, live webinars. If you can make them, we highly encourage you to do so. If you are unable to attend them, we do record them and then embed them into your student account. We offer the online program three times every year. We offer it every January, every May, and every September. Our upcoming session starts this May 14th, and the enrollment deadline is next month on April the 19th. The tuition for the course is $2,495, and you can find this information um, on our website, as well as if you would, are interested in enrolling, you can do so on the website or over the telephone with us. We do offer payment plans for the course. Currently, if you are considering the May session and you enroll during the month of March, there is a two-month payment plan where you can split the tuition between March in April and then start the course in May. If you are looking for a longer payment plan than two months, we certainly can accommodate you, um, but we would need to encourage you to enroll in our September fall session rather than the May session. Oftentimes our students um, have the tuition paid for by their employers. You are able to do that right on the website. Um, and the program is approved uh, for enrollments via Sally May, which we do have Sally May loan information on the website. It is also approved by the VA and my CAA for our military students. If you are a member of any of the groups shown here, you are eligible for a 10% discount. That would be the Association of Fundraising Professionals, or if you are current member or past participant in any of these, the Peace Corps, AmeriCorps, Teach for America, or City Year. All you need to do is enter the codes listed here in the shopping cart and you will see a 10% tuition reduction, which would be a savings of approximately $250 off the cost of tuition. The promotional codes that you see here in the webinar can also be found directly on the website. If you have any questions, I know we're about to start a question and answer session. However, after the webinar concludes, if you have any questions, please feel free to call a member of our enrollment team. We're certainly happy to, to advise you. Um, you can contact us via email at Boston University at mindmax.net. You can call us at 617-502-8822, or you can go to the website where we always try to provide the most up-to-date information as well as live chat. All right, great, thank you, Carrie. 
Um, and at this time, we will now start our questions and answers session um, for our folks on the line here. Um, please just make sure to type your questions in the questions box, as we mentioned before, on the right-hand side of your screen. And we'll try to address all questions for you. All right, John, um, I believe our first question here is for you. So we'll dive right in. Uh, what is the format like with the online platform? Do we interact with other students and build in-classroom-like relationships? or is it mostly a uh, solo undertaking? Uh, great question. So it is actually, uh, I always think, surprisingly engaging. So the primary connection you'll have with students is through discuss facilitated discussion boards, and you'll have the opportunity to uh, get to know each other through introductions at the beginning. Many will share uh, where they're located in the world, and sometimes that leads to ongoing connection as well. Um, and then you'll build off of each other's comments in a dynamic way throughout the course as you're addressing uh, the key questions from each module. There's also the opportunity through the live sessions if you're able to join them live uh, to have a little bit more of the classroom feel. Uh, through using Zoom, you'll be able to sort of see uh, the faces of your classmates and colleagues and uh, engage uh, live. All right, thank you, John. And our next question, Carrie, um, will pass to you. Are Boston University employees able to use their tuition remission benefit to enroll in this program? Thank you, Sarah. Um, unfortunately, the answer is no for that particular question. Please feel free to speak directly to your manager and HR, um, but in the past, the answer has been no. All right, thank you, Carrie. All right, our next question, after completing this course, will I be eligible for CFRE certification? And John, I'll pass that to you, please. Um, so as I mentioned, this course covers the education portion of the CFRE uh, requirement. There is also a work, requir work requirement. So depending on your background, uh, you may or may not uh, have that right away. And then you sit for an exam. All right, thank you. Um, our next question, do you attain a professional fundraising certificate at the end of this course, assuming you complete the work proficiently? And John, I'll pass that to you, please. Yes, you do, and on, on both accounts. So completing the course and completing it proficiently, and we have uh, both a standard for um, grade per module, and then over the 12-week period, you'll receive a certificate from BU at the end. All right, thank you. Um, and will this course be able to help me to transition into the development field from a for-profit job? John. Yes, so I find this uh, to be a path that many, many take. Um, and this course is helpful in a couple ways. One is uh, the basic understanding of the language of fundraising. Oftentimes a telltale uh, sign in an interview is not having a sense of uh, what, how to talk about the work that's being done. The other critical piece is it's a broad enough overview of uh, the fundraising field that you'll be able to match the skills that you've learned and developed um, in your uh, for-profit experience uh, with the nonprofit fundraising field, which uh, is not always clear and the depth you can get through understanding that I think has proven to be very helpful. We'll also take some time in this course at the last module talking specifically uh, about ways to best position uh, that particular pivot. Great, thank you, John. Um, our next question, what is the grading scale? Is it pass, fail, or a letter grade? And what is it exactly that we can be um, expected to be graded on, John? Yeah. Um, so for each week, you will receive a letter grade. It's made up of three elements. Uh, one is a reflection. Uh, this is a question asking you to think further about the, uh, the topic at hand, and that's actually graded pass, fail. The next is an assignment. Um, which is a sort of practical application of what you've been learning in that week, uh, a written assignment that's submitted that's uh, graded um, with a number or letter grade. And then the last piece is you are graded on your participation. So both the quantity, so are you engaging in the discussion forums and the quality of the posts that you're making. All right, thank you. Um, the next question, who is the ideal candidate for this program? 
is it more so those new to fundraising with a few years of experience or more mature fundraisers with 10 plus years of experience? I think it depends on what an individual is trying to get out of it. Uh, so we see every time we run that both of those audiences um, and that um, the engagement with the content and with each other is strong for the person who has a lot of experience as well as the person who has little experience. Um, so I'd be hard pressed to say which one is ideal, um, but it is a fit, I would say, for both. Great, thank you. And Carrie, this question is for you. Are there books required for taking the certificate program? Additional books are not required for this course. All the information that you will need will be provided from Boston University via your student account. Great, thank you. Um, are there any scholarships for this particular certificate? Carrie, I'll pass that to you. Um, thank you, Sarah. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, there aren't any um, current scholarships available. However, um, you can use the various discount codes on the website in order to um, save on the tuition for the course. Thank you for that. Um, our next question here is, once I complete this 12-week course, will I be able to work in the field or will I need additional education requirements? Um, John, I'll pass that to you, please, if you can. Sure. So definitely you will be able and uh, I think knowledgeable to work in the field. Um, I wouldn't say there's additional specific education that one would need, uh, but all dependent on which function. A reminder to folks that there's a lot of different job functions and a lot of different types of organizations in the fundraising field. Um, so honing in on what that is and what the skills are that you want to develop. You'll get a lot of them through this course, and I have no doubt um, we'll be able to be productive at an organization, but you may want to go deeper or um, expand your learning in different areas as well. Great, and John, I think the next one will pass to you as well. I hope I capture this correctly. Um, doing work with social enterprise in a 501c3, we need to raise capital for the enterprise as well as maintain the operating cost shortfall. Will this course help? Uh, so this course will definitely help in figuring out how to best raise funds for your organization. Um, I can I can say that for sure. And it, in the work of the course, the assignments will allow you to put together plans that you can actually apply directly to the organization that you're working with. So you can sort of do that real time as you're learning it, uh, which many have found to be helpful. Uh, not totally clear on the second part of that. Uh, maybe getting at you know re retaining nonprofit status. Um, so you don't actually have to run a shortfall to be nonprofit. Um, so, and philanthropy is not, uh, does not at all, um, philanthropy is enabled by the fact that you're a 501c3. It's not at all challenging to the 501c3. Great, great answer, John. Thank you. Um, our next question, will I be exposed to current trends in thinking in the field through this course? Yes. So, you know, the, um, the primary focus is uh, sort of the best practice and framework of the, that's the content, uh, the core content of the program. So that is uh, critical through the uh, live sessions, through the discussions, um, you'll be encouraged and prodded along by both instructors and your peers uh, to think about and develop uh, ideas around current trends. All right, thank you. And John, the next question again for you. Um, how is the certificate accepted and valued by the international nonprofit sector? That's a great question. Um, so I think it's a, a developing tool. Uh, so many international uh, organizations are finding themselves um, challenged by the need for fundraisers and the need to uh, raise money in climates that have not traditionally been 
particularly philanthropic. And my experience has been that the look to um, the United States where philanthropy has been uh, a long tradition has been strong and that having experience and learnings from uh, major universities uh, like BU um, has been positive. All right, thank you. Um, and will this curriculum address fundraising using social media, John? Yes, so in the technology enabled uh, fundraising module, they will address best practice and then encourage uh, students to go out and learn and experience what's going on in the uh, fundraising world through social media. All right, and our next question, um, how do the discussions between students and faculty take place? Um, I'm assuming they mean on the online forum. So I think that there's a, there's a couple ways. One is through the, uh, so as mentioned, they are facilitated discussion forums uh, each week where participation matters and instructors are involved. That's one of their, um, their key activities. So there's engagement there. Uh, there's engagement through the live classroom session if you're able to attend. And then there's also an internal mail um, uh, function where you can sort of one-on-one -on -one reach out to your instructors uh, for questions that are course and otherwise fundraising related. All right, great. Another one for you here, John. Are the courses simultaneous or do students move together through the modules during this 12-week instruction period? Uh, students move together through the 12-week instruction period. So each week a module opens, you engage with the content. Uh, it is, as mentioned earlier, all asynchronous. So for some, um, if you're managing this with work or other obligations, um, you know, you can do all the work in the first two days of the week. It's not sort of gated that way, but you do move sort of week by week together so that you're all engaging in the conversation and um, developing sort of the best educational experience. Great, thank you. Um, and if there's any last minute questions, please feel free to type them in now and we'll address them um, here. But it looks like our last question that's uh, coming today for you, John, is what can I expect to learn through these assignments and will I receive feedback on my submissions? Great, so um, there's 12 different assignments, so I don't think I'll get into each one of them, but they all are, are all practical applications of what you've been learning. So for example, in the annual giving module, you know, one of the ways to increase annual giving is by having a leadership giving society. The assignment um, in that module is actually creating, naming, uh, putting together gift levels of a giving society, um, which is a very practical application. On each of those, you receive written uh, feedback uh, and a grade. So it's very, um, it's very comprehensive in that way. Great, thanks so much. Um, so at this time, it looks like we have no other questions coming in. Um, so I'll say we will close our webinar. I would like to thank you all for joining us today and uh, learning more about our fundraising program at Boston University. Um, just a reminder to keep a lookout in your inbox uh, tomorrow for the recorded version of this webinar if you'd like to recap or share with your colleagues. Um, that is going to be available to you then. And with that, I will close the webinar here and wish you all a wonderful afternoon. Thank you to John and Carrie for your knowledge today. Thank you very much. Thank you.